you've got your guys, you got your camera, you're out uh, in the field. You have some camera issues uh, because camera issues happen, of course. But uh, this can be a backup device for a camera. Backup device could be a, like a first responder device to a news uh, uh, breaking news. So uh, basically, it's a only one, you know, camera transmitter. Okay, and and uh, just on the I/O on the on the in-go device. So this is your in-field device. So one of the things uh, we were doing uh, FA Cup uh, coverage live in Singapore uh, last weekend for the FA Cup final between uh, uh, Manchester United and Crystal Palace. Um, we had one of these uh, connected to a camera. Exactly what we're broadcasting off here at the moment. Uh, although there seems to be lots of people touching buttons. Are we live? Okay, sorry, I see people touching buttons at the back. I don't know if we're still on. Um, so the, 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 there's a demo device hanging off the cameraman being demoed at the moment. But uh, on the back here, so we um, we have the HDMI input. So we, we had the camera connected to the HDMI input, but we had a, we had a couple other cameras um, that were shooting uh, on, on the scene in, in Singapore. Um, and they were catching, they weren't plugged into the device, but they were recording the uh, uh, they were recording uh, reactions to the goals in the, in the FA Cup final and then they played it into this and it recorded it as a file and then we could transfer the file back to the studio um, so uh, at the at, at the half time or at the full time they could they could, they had the files they could do it top and tail and get it out in the edit so uh, in, interesting interesting to see all that in action in the field uh, which we are in action in the field realistically right now listen Dan thank you very much indeed for your time uh, and uh, I'm going to see if I can break into the guys behind us here. So actually, just before I go, because they, they are they are still going. You can see the Gero underneath and the Gero here. There's also another logo across the top here, which is uh, Ideal Live. So Ideal Live is a rental service uh, that we where we have uh, uh, these devices ready to go for rent, and we're going to uh, we are already renting these, but we we carry these in all our offices, and because Ideal has a number of offices across Asia, what it means is for people who want to cover sports events or live events of any kind, can be sports, could be news, uh, or even conferences they want to get like we are doing now live to web, um, we can actually uh, rent them these devices locally, uh, we can rent the batteries locally and they're ready to go. Of course there's a big problem in, in, uh, at the moment these days that uh, uh, these large uh, um, uh, rechargeable batteries um, have, uh, there are issues bringing them on airplanes so now you can just fly in, pick everything up, ready to go and uh, this, this battery literally clips on the back, something like that. I need, need two hands. Aerial. Clips on the back, and then it's this is ready to go. So, uh, and this can obviously pack onto the back of the camera, depending on the style of camera you have as well. So, this is what we're renting. Uh, we also rent out the uh, broadcast server, so you can put it in your facility. But what we're, this is this is the unit we're using just today. This is going live to web. This is what you'd have in your facility if you if you want to get in, into your facility. So. So the, the last part that uh, I would, we're just coming to the end the end of the booth. Um, so uh, literally, uh, uh, yeah, two an hour and forty minutes later, um, I'm, I'm going to j jump in here and I'm going to grab uh, Lindsay. Going to grab Lindsay. <laughs> So, uh, Lindsay Ryan uh, has uh, just joined Ideal, uh, literally at the start of the show. Yes, hi, thanks very much, Vinden. Welcome to Ideal. Thank you very much, I'm very proud to be here. All right, um, so uh, you joined Ideal, you have uh, a lot of experience in a specific market segment. This is the uh, subscriber management and billing uh, systems. Uh, and uh, so you brought this new product, PayWizard, here to the show. Yes. Tell us about your uh, experience with PayWizard so far at the show, how, how you're finding the show. Yeah, the response we've got to the PayWizard product is exceptional. And uh, I think one of the major reasons for that is the first billing platform that actually looks at the customer rather than the developer of the software and the operator. So the response we've got from people that it's uh, an extremely intuitive system that meets the needs of, of growing and uh, services with existing operators such as OTT and other services that they're trying to add. 
So we've, we've uh, you know, gone into the background of this, a lot of our existing uh, customers, uh, pay TV operators, they, they, you know, they might be satellite, they might be cable, but they're launching OTT services, they're finding existing bill billing systems inflexible, this is something that can meet that challenge? Yes, that's correct, absolutely. Um, a lot of the customers we've talked to here have already got tier one billing systems, but those systems are antiquated in terms of OTT and new services. The PayWizard product is able to address both their previous needs and their upcoming and existing needs. Okay, uh, I believe uh, you're you're in the UK with PayWizard before yeah. just before the show. I believe you brought the uh, CEO of PayWizard over with you. Yes. Um, shall we? Uh, so we see if we can grab him. So I'll just grab him. Thank you. So um, we're, we're very happy to be able to have the, the co-founder of PayWizard here, Mr. Jonathan Guthrie, uh, a man with uh, great insight. Um, so Jonathan, welcome here to uh, Communicasia, Broadcast Asia. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, sure. And we're happy to have you as part of the Ideal, Ideal Systems team. Yeah, thank you. It's been, uh, it's been a great experience and a very positive one. Yeah, how have you found the response so far to the, the product? Oh, absolutely amazing, uh, particularly having put so much effort into the product over the last sort of 6-12 months to make sure we've got a clearly differentiated product that uh, focuses so much on the, uh, on the, uh, the customer uh, marketing with advanced marketing features to uh, kind of drive customer acquisition and reduce churn and uh, basically make more money for the operator. Right. So the product is aimed at uh, being part of the operator's business rather than just selling them a solution, correct? I think that's, that's so important, putting the customer at the very heart of everything you do to make it really slick, really easy and very customer centric. Have you found a lot of interest from the Asia Pacific market in the PayWizard product from your point of view? We have. We see a lot of things happening over here. I think there's, there's a lot of uh, new initiatives going on, particularly with OTT. There's a lot of uh, technology refresh going on. So I think there's a lot of uh, interest in finding out what technologies are out there to support the next evolution in the pay TV market. And, uh, and the customer's got to be at the very heart of that revolution. Uh, and therefore, when people are, are seeing uh, what we've got to offer, I think that's, uh, that's really sort of... Uh, uh, sparking people's interest and imagination about what they can do in the future. I understand that the excitement generated in the product is actually causing you to uh, stay over next week and, and visit some clients who have some uh, uh, quite good news, I think, towards the product. Uh, that's absolutely right. Unfortunately, I can't stay over. I am have to go home and then back again next week for, uh, for the visits that you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you very much for coming out here and sharing uh, such an exciting product with uh, all the operators in the Asia Pacific region. I'm sure this will be a paradigm change for the way uh, customers are treated and businesses run their billing. I think that's right. So thank you to Ideal for a great experience. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jonathan. I'll hand you now back to Mr. Finton. Thank you very much. Jonathan, thank you very much. really appreciate it. We're looking forward to uh, a, a, a good relationship coming up uh, with uh, PayWizard. And I, I think already at the show, uh, we already have a, a lot to do. And uh, I think you're going to be busier. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, we've already have some work coming up. As I mentioned to everyone, uh, the interest generated by this product has asked people for us to urgently come and talk to them. So uh, we've got a lot of work coming, yes. A great combination, I think. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. So the final one that uh, I want to bring in is uh, uh, Guillaume Maffrey. So Guillaume Maffrey is our, our group COO. He, he sits in the uh, big fancy office in our head office in Hong Kong uh, with, with the great view. Uh, and, and, we, and us minions down here is where we all work away. So he comes down to check on the minions every now and then. But uh, more importantly, uh, ideal group. Uh, so what, what, what's going on there? So um, thanks, Vinton. It's good to talk to uh, underlings. It always makes me feel more powerful. <laughs> um, no, it's been a it's been a really good show, and uh, it's I think uh, the first time we've done this in the past two years, three years. Yeah. And it's uh, it's really grown uh, a lot. It's my first year in Ideal, so I was really impressed by uh, the work done, not only by the Singapore team led by Finton, but also uh, by all the all the vendors present here. Um, just to give you a, an insight in what the group is doing, you've seen a lot of the uh, various products we're doing. We launched uh, Ideal Media Works this year. Okay, tell, we, tell us a bit about Ideal Media Works because we, 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 we skipped over it there on the way by. Yeah, so Ideal Media Works is basically um, 
Ideal Group used to have a lot of different media assets, um, working on the MAM segments, working on digitalization, working on a lot of different things our software team had done. And we decided this year to unify all of these under uh, one brand. Uh, for some of you that know the Yapku uh, brand, we've put the Yapku in there, which is now our software arm, software development arm. So basically we're getting ready to address the OTT market on the different segments that are required by broadcasters. So the first tier, um, the enterprise market and the small medium enterprise market. So this is a specialist group, if you like, a specialist team within the ideal group? Yes, it's a specialist team that's going to focus entirely on that. Everything that's to do with uh, media and broadcasting from the OTT perspective. So they, they can do software, middleware, linking, development and, and, and really be that that glue that puts these complicated new systems together? Yeah, so what we realize when we talk to uh, various OTT vendors and customers and, and broadcasters is they all have the same problem. Um, the big boys in the OTT business that are coming to see them don't really have a fully end-to-end -end solution, including consulting about the systems. So we're just replicating what we do on the hardware side uh, with our SI business. Um, well, traditional business, and we're just replicating that in the OTT business, meaning uh, bringing them not only consulting, but also the choice of different solutions, platforms, uh, integrating all that, and in some cases, uh, as we've been required to do, uh, manage this whole service. Okay. So that's what we, that's uh, Ideal Media Works. Ideal Media Works, and uh, a bit more on Ideal Live and where so, Ideal uh, Live is going. This is uh, Fintan's baby originally, Ideal Live. <laughs> it's a fantastic idea. It's. Um, uh, it's a new word I learned today. You guys call it uh, contribution, I think, in the uh, broadcasting yeah, world, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is uh, um, getting the content from the from the field, uh, whether it's uh, news gathering, uh, whether it's live events. So we have started, I think, last year with Finton uh, taking on Digero, one of the brands we introduced, uh, to get basically live broadcasting and um, signals and, and put them uh, either on the internet or, or back to service. What we're doing uh, as a group this year is expanding the offering into uh, not only L-band services, uh, but also CKU-band services with uh, SNG uh, satellite services. And that's, uh, that's still a discussion in process. Uh, but we're quite confident that we'll be able to bring um, an end-to-end -end solution for uh, existing customers in the, in the field. We're just moving the ends out a little bit. We're just moving the ends out a little bit, which will make it more complex, but I think uh, Give us more flexibility, and it's all on the rental uh, basis. All right. Cool. So, um, other offices. Offices. So, that's enough for the product development. <laughs> now, um, we're also expanding geographically. We already have an existing footprint that's quite quite wide, uh, pan Asian, I could say. And this year, we opened the Dubai office. Uh, that should be uh, online, I think it's September, once we get the license to operate, okay. which will be based in uh, Media City in Dubai. Uh, we're already working on some projects in the Middle East with, uh, with uh, the, our team. We're expanding the China office with uh, two new people that are going to be probably based in Shanghai. And uh, we open our physical office in Jakarta coming up shortly as, uh, uh, whenever they get the paintbrushes out. Uh, it's all about the paintbrushes, <laughs> isn't it? So it's going to be a year of painting, uh, painting yeah, offices for the group. orange paint, you know. Yeah, fantastic. A phenomenal microphone, by the way. It's an absolute, <laughs> absolute cracker effort. Uh, I would like to show you the fridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, coming up next. <laughs> and it's content. Yeah. So, Finn, thanks again. Thank you very much, Kim. I appreciate that. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you very much. So, I, just while we were talking to Kim there, uh, I, I noticed that uh, MC Patel snuck in the back. So if I can get, uh, that's a dance. <laughs> so we we breezed by uh, emotion systems here, but we shouldn't have breezed by them too quickly. Uh, MC Patel's been working with Ideal Systems for how long? Oh, since Ideal was started in the 90s. So 25 years plus? Five years plus, yeah. Okay. Tell us a bit about uh, uh, what uh, Emotion Systems does. Tell us a bit about the product. What sort of people are using them and what's the, what's the kind of use cases? Okay. So we started Emotion Engines about Emotion Systems about six years ago. And the idea was to do file based processing. And it really started as a, so I, the concept is we have a series of audio modules that we string together to allow you to process MXF or QuickTime files. Um, we started off doing loudness. Um, where we are unique is that when we touch the file, uh, we extract the audio and just the audio, process it, and give you a copy of the new one. So we haven't broken the video structure, or the metadata structure, or the file structure. Um, that then evolved from loudness to Dolby encoding, Dolby decoding, channel mapping, um, up mix, down mix, so now we can do audio workflows. 
Um, the system works by allowing you to automate the, uh, that processing, so you save a lot of time and money, and you can do lots of volume, so it's scalable. Uh, the sort of people who are using it, uh, Ericsson France is uh, doing playouts with them, and they have uh, uh, three, syst uh, three f instances at once of processing. They're doing 2,000 hours uh, of processing a month. Uh, we have uh, Star TV, uh, we have TVB in Hong Kong, Astro in Malaysia. And what sort of, you know, you got language remapping, loudness, what, what, what are the kind of functions that they're driving out of this? Generally what they're doing is in order to do the play out, you, you know, you need to, what they say, normalize the audio. So you need stereo, stereo, Dolby, Dolby E. And they get, the files they actually get supplied may only start with a single stereo. So what we do is we say, what do I need to do to the audio to get it from whatever state it is to, to match what you need for the playout server. Now that's one instance. Uh, and now when you do that, um, in the, the, the Astro have for example 15 different workflows. And uh, if you do that in an edit suite, can be done, but it's very time consuming. All they do is they come up to us, give us the file and say, run this workflow through. Uh, now in the case of Astro, they get content which may be packaged for correctly, i.e. stereo, stereo, Dolby, Dolby, but they need to compliance check it. So they again need to take it into the edit suite. For that, we have we decode the, uh, the Dolby for them and give them a, a PCM tracks. And then when they finish with it, we repackage it. Uh, now, in the, in the case of Astro, they're using watch folders to do that. So each, wo each workflow has a, has a watch folder. Yeah. So, well, it's because not everyone has the automated workflow. So we put in uh, abilities to go from manual one file at a time operation, a watch folder, or a sharing scenario where you can have client software. So you can have 20 people sharing one engine, and we, uh, the, inside the engine there's a job management system. And then that same product can be used over an API. Okay. And, and from the point of view of, you know, so obviously Astro is a very large you know, uh, pay TV operator, uh, and you're, you're talking about very large companies, but smaller companies can use this or can test it or we can get their hands on it easily? So small co we have lots of small companies doing it because they have to provide, say, loudness compliance or Dolby encoding and so on. So one-man bands, for example, can do this. Uh, in terms of usability or accessibility, if you want to try it out, you can go on our website and we give you a 10-day license. So you can just download the software straight from the website? Straight from the website. Give us your name, your email address, and a phone number, and it will self-activate. Um, and you can try every one of the options that we have in the same. You, you license all of the yeah. all, all of the different plugins. All working copies. So we're not trying to say, well, half of it works or does it. Everything that because in this day, it's very easy for people to try it out in the, on their own files. Um, the other thing we do, coupled to that, is we will help them with, by just going on TeamViewer and set it up. Okay, so you can help support, w walk them through a process remotely? That's right, yeah. And then sometimes you also say, send us the file, we'll process it for you and give you an example back. So all these are really designed to make life easy. Uh, and if things get complex, we're, we're geared for that complexity. Okay, that sounds very good. Anything, uh, anything else you care to add? Is there anything new coming up? Or what are the challenges in the future? So, the new thing, that, as I said, we started off doing this simple audio loudness and the modules. We it sounds like a very overused expression, but we're very customer driven. So generally, when we show them what we do, the guy says, oh, I have this as a problem. So right now, the, the big issue is that I have my MXF file, but it's two channels only. I really want an eight channel file or it's 16 channels and I want to take it down to 8 channels. So we created this adding and removing of the audio channels. And then whilst we're doing that, somebody said, what happens if I just give you the video and the audio? Can you make an MXF file? So this is a graphics department of a big broadcaster in the UK. And they were generating, um, the graphics department was generating the video clips and the audio department generating audio clips. And they didn't want to go into an edit suite just to marry the two. So where we're evolving now is I guess we're focusing more on, uh, not away from audio, but adjacent to audio's metadata and packaging. And that was really 
And, and we mentioned there about a customer that was using it in a in a kind of a watch folder, but this can be uh, run behind a MAM system, can be fully automated as well? Absolutely. So Ericsson France is a fully automated system being driven by a TDL MAM. Uh, we have a guy, in, a customer in Italy who's being driven by Snell Momentum. Uh, we have other people who've written their own script. So there's a RESTful API to drive this. In fact, the watch folders and our client software use the same API. So the, it is very comprehensive in terms of how, uh, how you want to use the product uh, and uh, many levels of uh, usability, I guess. Very good. Okay, MC Patel, thank you very much indeed. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So I think that's about it. Uh, we do have at the show here, we, uh, we have some other technologies as well. Um, on our website, you'll see there's a link actually to uh, uh, some video uh, about uh, Bluefish 444. So Bluefish 444 uh, are, provide very high-end uh, I.O. cards um, with a very high bit sample rate. Uh, and what we're demonstrating here, you won't be able to see because this is a, a Sony uh, HDR monitor and uh, we're, we're filming in uh, HD 1080i. So you're not actually going to be able to see the picture quality on this, but this is, this is uh, full HDR. And, and the demonstration that we have here is, uh, is how we can show what the what a HDR file uh, looks like uh, ingested with Bluefish, and what what uh, what you know what a, a lower quality ingest can show. So, um, other things from Bluefish are, are, are these uh, um, kind of uh, pro high-end uh, uh, video converters as well that uh, have a number of settings, so we can we can set automatically. Um, Bluefish work uh, as uh, products by themselves, and th but they also uh, are, are very much involved in the OEM space. So, uh, for example, uh, Starfish that we were talking to earlier on uh, are actually a customer of Bluefish. I notice a, a lot of fishing, uh, fishing going on here, but uh, you know, so they supply a lot of the manufacturers. So you'll, you'll find a lot of broadcast manufactured devices actually have Bluefish cards in them, and uh, we've got uh, Craig Mott here at the show. But um, on, on our YouTube channel, uh, Ideal Systems uh, TV, uh, there's a, a great introduction into Bluefish uh, from Craig Mott, so if you get a chance, take a look at that. Um, the other thing that we have on the booth is behind the cameraman, um, and again, we've, we, we, we've, it's returned to the booth um, after, uh, after uh, a, we, we've, we've been running with Elemental now for a number of years, of course Elemental recently got acquired by uh, Amazon uh, Web Services. So the two Elementals we have here, the Elemental Conductor and the Elemental Live, we've had a, a lot of deployments of Elemental for its high density encoding and its multi-format multi streams. So this is really what you're looking at with these Elementals is uh, the, the back-end engine and the stream creation for uh, OTT uh, service providers. So um, whilst uh, a lot of OTT can be done in the cloud, this is really the on-premise uh, video transcoding uh, and, and workflow managers for uh, creating those uh, OTT streams. So that's uh, there's a, a full and deep uh, product set and ever expanding product set from Elemental. We work very closely with them. Uh, we don't just sell the boxes. We we integrate them into uh, into more uh, the, the 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 overall workflow and solution. Um, and also uh, one of the key things about Elemental now is that uh, whilst you can have on-premise machines, you have kind of physical local control. It's also also fully virtualizable, so you can you can run the same system, but in a spin-up, spin-down requirement uh, in the cloud. So uh, you can get into your uh, Amazon Web Services uh, in the cloud. So uh, so that's that's what we have with Elemental. Uh, our Elemental guy is off, probably doing some business. He's been very busy here, uh, and he's been uh, overrun during the show. So with that, we're uh, two hours. Uh, almost to the minute since I started. Uh, Vino is tired, yanking this camera all over the booth. So uh, with that, we're going to sign off uh, from our uh, live broadcast here uh, at Broadcast Asia. Um, I hope you find this interesting. Um, all of these partners uh, are really 
uh, cutting edge in each of the different areas in which they work. So, you know, from PayWizard, yeah, we, we, we listen carefully to our customers, we look carefully at what's happening in the market space here in Asia to see what they're trying to do. So, uh, you know, the, the inflexibility of the uh, existing uh, system uh, systems that they have for, for uh, payments and billing to, to manage the new bundle types um, that are uh, and, and, and the new marketing types that are uh, needed for for new services on new platforms and multi-platform services. So uh, I think PayWizard is going to have a, a really really big impact on the market in the in the coming year. I think it, it fits a need. Uh, I think the existing uh, billing um, billing solutions that have been deployed maybe up to ten years. Uh, you know, they're, they're ground into older technology. So we're, we're taking later technology in um, regionalization and ad insertion with, with uh, Starfish. It, you know, what, what they're doing and how they do it is brilliant. Um, coming across Qualstar, you know, this back end, this storage on the, on, the, on the storage device. We've worked with Qualstar for a number of years. These things are pretty much bulletproof. Um, I broadcast uh, the facilities management. We started working with them a couple of years ago, and now we're really uh, starting to deploy, deploy some very, very big uh, systems. What started as small little uh, control and monitoring systems are, are, are growing, uh, are growing the whole time. Uh, Bluefish, we, we've deployed a number. We have a number of different implementations of Bluefish, and speak of the devil. As if, as if by magic, a bluefish Craig Mott appeared. Vincent. Hey Craig, how hey. you doing? Good to see you. I, I did a real bad, uh, I did a real bad impro for Bluefish there. I'm glad you're here to save me. You know? uh, no, no, that was fine. Perfect. Craig is very custom. Thank you, Dan. Craig is very custom that uh, at talking about Bluefish on TV. Uh, as I said, as I referred them to your video already, mate. Oh, you know, perfect, so I was perfect. like, if if yeah. I can't do it, Craig can do it. You know, yeah, but um, tell us a bit about Bluefish. Uh, Bluefish 444, we're an uncompressed SDI video card manufacturer. We support uh, SD, HD and 4K um, uh, SDI input and output through our video card. Uh, we are the highest quality video card manufacturer uh, in the industry and that is because we have a 12-bit processing engine inside our cards. It's been developed in firmware and it's been deployed in every generation of so card that we've you, ever made. You mentioned 12 bits. So what, what, are, what, are your, what are the other I.O. cards doing on that? What's, what's their bit depth? Our competitors are, are processing the SDI at, at, at 10 bit pixel depth. So but, the so sorry, 10 and 12 just sounds like a small difference? It does, but for, uh, 12 bit processing has 4,096 individual levels of red, green, and blue processing per pixel, whereas 10 bit has 1,024. So that's four times the difference. So that's massive. And as actually, I'm not sure if you can get a shot up here, but we can actually, I can actually show you what the Bluefish uh, quality looks like. Uh, we're limited only by the quality of the output. That's okay? A, that's a 1080i camera. <laughs> no, no. I'm looking at this, right? All right. So we come over here, we have a look. This is a Sony uh, high dynamic range, a 4K 60p high dynamic range monitor. And this is the only 4K high dynamic range monitor anywhere here at anywhere here at Broadcast Asia. The, 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 the Sony know this. <laughs> Uh, we purchased it. Uh, Sony probably don't know this, so I probably should be telling them, but uh, they're so hard to come by that we, uh, that we basically bought one and we ship it around with all the trade shows with us. So I'm not joking, there's tens of thousands of dollars worth of monitor here, and this is for colour grading. Um, so we are, with our 12-bit processing engine, we are able to show you um, high dynamic range preview. And that's what it looks like. So I'm not sure if it's coming through on the camera, but that is pristine. And that's got a, it's got a I think it's got a thousand nits. Nits are the uh, measure of brightness, and compared to uh, standard dynamic range, there's a uh, there's a hundred. So that's ten times brighter. This is uh, ultra UHD premium. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's what our card can do. That's an example of our card uh, playing out uh, the preview. So we're the highest quality acquisition preview here and master. So back to tape. What we're running here is uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, but we have a lot of different partners, that uh, software that works with our card. And here on the ideal stand, probably the biggest partner is VizRT. So the same video card that's in here running Adobe Premiere Pro and doing 4K high dynamic range, the same video card works with the Viz render engine. Which we were looking at earlier on. Looking at before. So Bluefish has three supported workflows with VizRT. 
We're there for virtual sets where we have a very low latency. We're there for character generation, uh, live production character generation, and we have a channel branding solution, uh, a down, downstream Kia. All working with VizRT, same cards, and another one of your partners here, Starfish, who have got uh, subtitling and ad insertion. They're also a Bluefish uh, compatible partner. And our dealer, uh, our Bluefish customer, reseller, and uh, all sorts. Our deal, Ideal's our partner for this part of the world. Tell us a bit about the, uh, the standalone boxes. Uh, that's a good point, thank you. Uh, over here on the wall, we have a range of uh, converters. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, an SDI to HDMI, and it's uh, uh, one uh, SDI up to 3G SDI, converting to HDMI 1.3. We have the opposite, we have uh, HDMI converting to SDI and we have analog converting to uh, SDI. Uh, high quality uh, conversions and they're made for broadcasters, they have redundancy channels where they can. So if your power fails, it switches over. And uh, Ideal have done a good job of uh, uh, installing that in one, uh, one large install. Can you give us a, a use case uh, example of what you might use that for? Uh, VizRT uh, actually the demonstrations here on your stand, uh, the SDI output from the live capture over there is being converted to HDMI and the, mo and the monitoring is done on uh, a HDMI monitor. And that's important because uh, SDI monitors are quite expensive. HDMI monitors are usually one tenth of the price. So uh, yeah, we have a high quality conversion products. Okay. What's, uh, what's in your roadmap? What's coming up? Uh, what's in our roadmap is something very interesting for this part of the world. We have, uh, not, only, not only do we have all these uh, software partners like VizRT and Starfish and Avid and Adobe and so forth, we make our own software. And uh, we have a product called Ingestor, which is a live production tool and a multi-channel VTR digitization tool. Uh, that's getting some reasonable uh, adoption with uh, universities and people with lots of tape. We can set up, our cards have got four, four channels on them. So you can have one, two, three, four VTRs digitising simultaneously. So you just have to have a fast enough CPU to let it happen. Uh, that product also works uh, in conjunction with Avid and Adobe. And one of the most requested features in the industry for live production workflows where they're making reality TV is they want to be able to edit while they're, while they're recording. So what they do in reality TV, in the cooking shows and stuff, uh, they go to a break, they come back after the break and they do a very small recap of what the judge's expression was and the, you know, and who got what score and et cetera, et cetera. That's a good example of editing, uh, editing while you're actually capturing. Uh, so that's in our roadmap. That's what will be coming in the next release of our product called Ingestor. So at the moment, it's uh, multi-channel VTR digitization and some live production workflows. But in our next release in June or July, you'll be able to use that uh, as a, live, a genuine live production tool. You'll be using Adobe and Avid to do the editing. Will we see it by ABC? Absolutely. All right, very good. Actually, we're doing a demo of it around on our uh, stand out the front. On their other booth, yet again, yet again, uh, fa fa main, 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 main and backup booth there. Uh, actually, our booth is with our other partner here that, who you do a good job of selling, is uh, Media Proxy who have got a media logging solution, so I should, share I, I a should booth. Run, I should run over to Media Proxy. Yeah, we, we, we share, uh, they're another one of our software partners and uh, we share the stand here at, uh, at, at Broadcast Asia. Yeah, yeah. Just, to, just to give a call out for Media Proxy, uh, you know, it's a, a video, video logging, compliance logging, we, we, we do a lot of it, we, we've got over 100 channels of it running here yeah. in Singapore already and, and, and growing, you know. That's 100 Bluefish SDI inputs. Yep. The highest quality SDI inputs are media logging. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Craig Martin, okay. appreciate it. Good timing. I think that, that brings us to a close, actually. I think we've, co we've covered everybody on the booth, and uh, uh, Chris is, uh, if I just bring you around here, we'll, we'll, we'll have a look in from the back, because uh, I want to show you what's actually been happening here all the way through the show. The augmented graphics, the robot uh, with the Grass Valley camera, uh, with the Viz RT, has been drawing these crowds. If you pan around there, you'll actually see Pretty much, we've had, thank you sir, we've had 40, 50 people crammed around trying to get a view. They're, they're jammed right down the backside here as well. So uh, uh, I apologize to all the people in the booths uh, surrounding us who, uh, who've had a, a jammed up uh, aisle, but uh, uh, we're delighted. We've had a great broadcast Asia here. Uh, 
if you if you get a chance to come, we still still got uh, one more day to go. So we got we got another day tomorrow. And uh, failing that, thank you for joining us. And uh, I think uh, we'll bring it to a close there. Thank you very much. Appreciate you watching. Cheers.